in this uh, activity, one of the next things I want to do is I want to place multiple enemies into the room. And a good game becomes more difficult all the time. So we like to start with just one enemy plane and get more planes over time. To this, I'm going to make an object called controller enemy. And you'll notice I haven't made a sprite for this. I have no sprite for controller enemy because I don't need one. The controller enemy is just going to control the enemies that come down. It doesn't, it's not a picture, uh, it has no face to it. So what's going to happen is in controller enemy, um, what I'm going to do is in the beginning when it's created, I'm going to get it to uh, set an alarm. I do that by going to main two and placing alarm in there. It asks for the number of steps. This game in the game settings is set up to run at 30 frames per second. And so if I put 30 in, that means in 30 steps, it'd go one second. So I'm gonna put uh, a number like 100, which is about three seconds. And in 100 steps, alarm zero is going to ring. What's gonna happen when alarm zero rings? Let me go to alarm zero, and that's gonna be a new event. So I make a new event, add event, alarm zero. Um, and I say when alarm zero rings, what I want to do is I want to create an object. So I go to main one and create another object of an enemy at some random location in the width of the room and negative 64, so it's above the room. So it's going to come at negative 64 and above. It's not relative, right? Because it's just coming from a new location. And then I'm going to tell alarm zero by going to main two uh, to ring again. When? In maybe um, three more seconds about. So I'll put another 100 here. And it's going to keep happening. Now a lot of students will do this and say, oh, let me play the game and let's see more enemies come. And so they press play and uh, they run the game. And there's the two enemies I have. And a third enemy should be coming. It's not. Why is the third enemy not coming yet? Well, the reason is because in my room, where is controller enemy? It's not in the room. I didn't add it to the room. So how does it know to run that object? Because it's not in the room. So just because I made the object doesn't mean it's going to work. It has to be placed in the room. So I'm going to place it in the top left corner. And when I click on it, it puts a question mark in a circle. And the question mark in a circle just means the object is there, but it doesn't have a sprite associated with it. So it's not going to have a plane or an island or something of a sprite associated because controller enemy doesn't have a sprite. Controller enemy just controls the enemies. If I hover over it, um, it will tell me at the bottom of the screen that that is controller enemy. Okay, the next thing I want to do, so now it will work. Uh, the next thing I want to do is put a scoreboard in. To put a scoreboard in, what I'm going to do is I've got this graphic, which is a beautiful graphic that someone made using a graphics program like Fireshop, Fireworks or Photoshop or, or uh, Paint Shop Pro or something like that. And what's important with this graphic is I know exactly um, the width and height of it. This graphic um, has been designed to fit in my game. And if I look at my room, for example, and I go to the settings, you'll notice the width of my room is 640 and the height is 480. And that's important to keep in mind when you're making the graphic. So the graphic, the width of that graphic that you see the scoreboard graphic right here is exactly 640. Why? Because it's going to fit exactly into my room. The height of this is a hundred and uh, something. I don't have the exact number. Uh, I should, and I can open up a graphic editor to find that out. 
But what's going to be important is where I place this graphic. And you're going to notice that I'm going to tell the computer to um, place the graphic at the zero position. So the top left corner is going to be to the left side of the screen and then 640 across width. And the Y position is 404 down because the rest of the graphics are going to fill right to the bottom. So I know that Y is 480. So I can do some simple math and I can tell you that this must be 76 pixels tall. Okay, let's go to Game Maker and add that. So I go to Sprite, create Sprite, and I'll call it uh, scoreboard. And I'm going to load the scoreboard, which was drawn already. Um, sorry, bottom. It's called bottom. And I'm going to press OK. Notice this is the one graphic I don't center because I want its origin to be 0, 0, the top left, because that's where I'm using it to place it. Okay, I'm going to make an object to place the scoreboard and I've got controller enemy and this time I'm going to make an object called controller life or game controller. Yeah, I'll call it game controller. So I'm going to uh, have game controller. I'm not going to add a sprite to the game controller either. The game controller is going to have an event and the event is going to be the draw event. And in the draw event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. So I go to the draw tab and I tell it to draw a sprite. What sprite do I want it to draw? I want it to draw the bottom sprite, which is the scoreboard, at position X0 and Y is going to be 404. And again, the mistakes a lot of students will forget is you need to go to your room and you need to put the game controller also in your room and I'll click it and put it next to the other.